you know, one person's path in life can lead them in different directions in relation to how they impact their community, their world, their sport, their, uh, their job. But uh, this guy, I have big respect for him for a number of years because in the key years of the New England Whalers, he was a fixture on the, the back end, a very good player from the uh, strong Bosniak uh, family. His brother was a great hockey player as well. Unfortunately, he passed away on March 8, 2024 in the Thunder Bay uh, region. Now, uh, in the, at South, uh, Southbridge Pinewood Court. Now, Ron uh, Bosniak, or Bosniak, uh, known as Baba and Buzzy to his friends, uh, was born in Fort William on August 1348 where he grew up in the East End and attended the great Selkirk High School. Following graduation, he earned a scholarship at the University of Minnesota Duluth, where he excelled at hockey and his senior year, was named an All-American in the great campaign of 69-70. Following college, he continued his hockey career playing pro in both the NHL and WHA, while he forever remained 10th all-time in WHA career penalty minutes. Tough as nails and wasn't scared to take a, take a penalty, and uh, him and Gordy Gallant were the two kind of big guys of his era in the, in that uh, uh, era of toughness. Not say slap shout, but uh, pretty close to it. Now, when he retired from, from pro hockey in 78, in the mid-80s, he led the Thunder Bay Twins to multiple Allen Cup victories, his proudest hockey moments. Upon retiring from coaching senior hockey, his focus shifted to his true passions of mentoring and encouraging young hockey players with extensive knowledge of the game. Ron enjoyed coaching his son Bryson in both baseball and hockey. Now, throughout his life, he was a frequent fixture at the local rinks where he enjoyed watching his nieces, nephews, and close friends were sitting in his treasure seat at the Fort William Gardens. Now, his passion for hockey continued later in life as he enjoyed traveling the States with his beloved wife, Paula, to watch Bryson play and later on to visit her grandchildren in Charleston, South Carolina, where he spent many winters. The ultimate baby holder, Bubba derived supreme joy from spoiling his granddaughters with pop skills and exuberant affection. Known by those who loved him as an avid connoisseur of fine foods, he always knew where to find his favorite dishes, uh, where, wherever his travels took him. His love of food was only surpassed by his love and curiosity for people. A natural raconteur, Ron had a true gift for connecting with others through storytelling. Now, survived by his wife, Paul, of 52 years, his son, Bryson, Ginny, uh, three granddaughters, Brady, Reese, and Sydney, siblings, Mike, Charlotte, uh, Kenny, and Larry, sister-in-law is Brenda, Christian, Lynn, Lynn Poyer, and Jan. Numerous beloved nieces, nephews, cousins, and relatives are also left to mourn. Now, the, the thing about his life in hockey is in two walls of fame, and we'll get to that in a second. I want to go a little bit deeper in his career, and thank you for Legacy.com for publishing that. I, I don't rarely do that, but there's a lot of background I wanted to cover it because he's a, he's a legend throughout the Thunder Bay region. Now he's in the Northern uh, Ontario Sports Hall of Fame and the University of Minnesota Duluth Athletic Hall of Fame. It's not just because he was kind of, you know, uh, one of those big enforcers of WHA history. He was a really talented guy. Now, he did play six games in the NHL, all with the Sabres, during 73 and 74. Now, uh, he, uh, Ron then moved to the WHA, playing a total of four full seasons again with the Minnesota Fighting Saints, where Gordon Glant was a teammate, the England Whalers and the Edmonton Oilers between 74 and 78. Now, prior again to pro hockey, University of Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs were one of their best errors. And again, he's All-American in his senior year. Now, at 5'11", 180, very deceptive. He played like a 6'2 player. I saw him play numerous games at WHA, and uh, he was sort of like uh, like a bigger version of uh, on the ice of Rick Green with the tenacity of a good you know, a defenseman that wasn't scared to say, listen, leave our top players alone. I'm going to take their part. Now, he played the AHL with an overture of Scotia Voyageurs and, of course, the great heir of the Cincinnati Swords, which were a Buffalo affiliate. He was also named to the AHL first All-Star team. Now, the Thunder Bay Twins senior hockey team won consecutive titles in the Allen Cup in uh, the 1980s. Now, uh, brother Mike, of course, who also played the NHL, uh, broke in with the Ford William Kings of the TBAHA and the Fort William Canadians of the TBJHL in 65. With Fort William in 66, he had 42 points in 30 regular season contests with 15 goals. 67, he played the Memorial Cup with Fort William, uh, 20 points. 
Now, with the Duluth uh, over those three seasons, some terrific numbers, almost a point a game pace. In 28, 29, 28 games, you had 20, 27, and 28 contests. And, of course, 68 uh, uh, was the uh, the 10-goal campaign. And, of course, 1970, uh, his point total went up to 73. Now, when he uh, joined the Voyagers for uh, two seasons, we knew that he was there for a reason. Good on defense and uh, good to protect his fellow players. And 72, of course, uh, I think it was his best AHL campaign, in my personal opinion, where he had... Um, 82 games that year with 16 goals, uh, 18 assists for 34 points with over 200 minutes and combined penalties, 74 in the postseason. So now he played uh, his first game in the NHL in 73 with Buffalo, but the majority of the season with the Swords that year, five goals, 34 assists for 39 points, 205 minutes in penalties with eight points in the postseason, one goal. Now with Buffalo in 74, three big assists in five games, but with the Swords, 68 contests, 31 points in 68 uh, games, two points in the playoffs. Now to jump to Minnesota in 75, again, Minnesota had a literally a strong rear guard uh, position and uh, what he call uh, uh, tough people. And like I said, him and Gordy were, were tremendous. 75, he had 23 points in 73 games, three points in the playoffs. 76, he split time between Minnesota and New England, 70 games, 16 points. And, of course, a uh, big 17 games in the playoffs with New England that year were two assists. Ironically, he did play in the playoffs for the Voyagers in 76. Now, 77 uh, with the Whalers again, 10 points in 55 games, and 29 with Edmonton. So that year, 14 contests in uh, 80, uh, 84 games and uh, five uh, games in the postseason. Pole Last uh, major pro year was in 78 with Edmonton. 20 points in 59 games, 105, 57 minutes in penalties. Again, top 10 all all time, averaging close to three penalty minutes a game uh, with WHA. Nine goals, 64 assists for 73 points, 76, 762 minutes in penalties, seven points in 39 postseason contests with uh, three, uh, three different franchises, and again, uh, two goals. Now, all WCHA first team in 1970, and all... Uh, all-American AHCH West in 1970. Now, he was in the, kind of the second wave of the great college players from the, the Minnesota region. And uh, just like his uh, brother, a very, very well-respected guy. Now, Mike, I just want to go over this very, very quickly. He came up to, as well through the Fort William Canadiens program a little bit uh, after his, uh, his brother. Then, of course, with the University of Denver, that big 73 season we still talk about. Again, he played with the New York Scotia Vergers and the Bull Shadows before he found his way with the Flyers. And uh, his rookie campaign in 1980 stands out a lot because he made it to the Stanley Cup Finals uh, that year as, a, as an overage uh, uh, rookie. Uh, we always thought he was going to make uh, the Montreal Canes franchise. Didn't work. Now, he did have a successful uh, career in Europe and also found his way back to the Thunder Bay Twins, you know, uh, where his brother was involved as well. So uh, coaching as well with Tri-City, Muskegon, Lakehead, and Pusler uh, Al-Wolf in the Italy, Italy. So the brothers have a legacy. Uh, there's, tr there's three things that we're known for. Toughness, determination, and basically uh, very community-oriented. So you can't say Ron without mentioning Mike because I respect him an awful lot because when Mike made it, I knew that Ron had made it before and I always thought they would play together uh, with the Flyers because uh, Ron was on the tail end of his career and I think he would have able to wear and tear of all those elite seasons together because, you know, uh, the AHL, the early 70s boys, there was, there was some rough road trips and all that. But you got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there, that Thunder Bay system that they both came up in, uh, it's beloved by, if you can survive Thunder Bay minor hockey and Thunder Bay junior hockey and Thunder Bay senior hockey, you can survive any place because there's only certain places in Canada where everything is linked together. And Thunder Bay had its own junior league at the time, which is just immensely an immense thing. And I was very fortunate because I've covered Thunder Bay juniors over the years or affiliated to the Thunder Bay region. I've seen them the do nothing but bring pride to the sport. So to Ron's extended family, there's quite a bit. And friends, our condolences. I'm sorry I never got to the podcast 
uh, until today. I've uh, been pro- quite busy. We try to celebrate the people of WHA and NHL history of the 60s and 70s that we really respect. So, Ron, I hope that uh, when you get to heaven, you got a good uh, a good 40-inch TV to watch whatever team uh, is your favorite because I know I heard through the grapevine through my connections with the Ontario Junior League that there was different franchises and players you've supported over the years. So may one of them win the Stanley Cup in your honor this year. And like I said, brother, you will be missed. But you and you and you and Mike, you brought a lot of thrills and, and importance to hockey in many ways. So like I said, I just don't want the people to think I do podcasts just to you know to get hits. This is important to, to celebrate uh, people like Ron and Mike because you know uh, you give fifty or sixty years to a sport. You know, you deserve uh, the best respect when you pass on. And see, the body's only a shell. The big hockey game up there, there's no aches and pains. You don't need IE5, Tree 5, or, and, you know, the angels are taping your sticks before you have a chance to. So I hope uh, heaven is, is a place where the rink is always cold and uh, the juice and the pop on the, on the sidelines is always unflat, as we say. Thanks for listening. Bye.